Now, for this next story, I want to give credit to two groups. Uh, one is Common Cause, uh, who unearthed the documents on ALEC. That's the American Legislative Exchange Council. They are the group that puts business interests together with uh, state legislators to basically uh, give us laws that are pro-corporations uh, with almost no regard for how it uh, treats the public. Uh, I also want to give credit to the New York Times, uh, Mike uh, McIntyre, for writing a very good story about this. Now, what Common Cause is doing is they found 4,000 internal documents from Malik, hundreds of pages of minutes of private meetings, member email alerts, and correspondence. They gave it over to the New York Times. They also gave it over to the IRS and said uh, they should not have their nonprofit status here. They, it should not be uh, something you can deduct from your taxes to contribute to these guys because they are obviously a lobbying organization. There's no question about that as you read through the story. Now, they start with the story of uh, what's happening in Ohio. There's a prominent Republican state senator, Bill Seitz, and uh, he basically helped to kill a bill that would have uh, said, that would have made it easier to recover money from businesses that defraud the state. Now, think about that. Shouldn't we have a bill that makes it easier to recover money from people that are defrauding us? They're defrauding the taxpayers, they're robbing us. Shouldn't it be easier to get money from them? Well, not if you're those companies who are doing the robbery. So they send people like Bill Seitz in to go, oh, no, 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 we're not interested in that. Now make sure you kill that piece of legislation. That's corporations working with state legislators against the interest of the public they are supposedly representing. Uh, and uh, of course, there are actually 2,000 state legislators across the country that are part of ALEC, that are in cahoots here with multinational corporations to do their bidding for money. Uh, and let me give you some of the quotes from the article. Now, after a review of the internal documents, they said, the records offer a glimpse of how special interests effectively turn ALEC's lawmaker members into stealth lobbyists, providing them with talking points, signaling how they should vote, and collaborating on bills affecting hundreds of issues like school vouchers and tobacco taxes. Now, of course, if you're the tobacco companies and you're part of ALEC, you don't want tobacco taxes, so you get your hired guns to make sure that they go kill them. But it's not just actual you know, legislative uh, maneuvers that these legislators do. Alec also gives them talking points, says, hey, if you go on television or you're going to go talk to a newspaper, dog, this is what you say to them, okay? And of course the legislators go, roo, 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 roo. okay, yes, what do you need me to do, master? Okay, we're going to get, talk about why they're doing that in a second. Uh, I love this. Alec maintains that, no, 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 we're not a lobbying organization. Although what our members do on a state-by-state -state basis might be considered lobbying, the national group doesn't lobby itself. In other words, all we do is lobbying, but those are the members, that's not the organization. But what makes up the organization? Your members. This is the worst defense ever. Uh, by the way, that same legislator, Mr. Seitz, says that, no, no, no. The corporations and the legislators get together and we just, quote, share ideas and learn from each other. Oh, I see, okay. In other words, they give you the ideas and you act on them like they're paid dog that you are. All right, uh, and uh, by the way, their brochures brag, and again, this is internal diamonds. We found 1,000 pieces of legislation that they have uh, offered uh, on any given year, which is an unbelievable amount and that they have passed 17% of them. So that's 170 bills written by corporations, handed to Republican legislators, we'll get to whether they're Republicans in a second, they claim to be nonpartisan, handed to them and then passed. Okay, good job, good job, pat on the head. Um, and then they brag internally to the corporations that this is, quote, a good investment and nowhere else can you get a return that high. And that is very true. That's what we've been telling you on the Young Turks all the time. It, there's no better investment than buying an American politician. In one case, in a repatriation uh, tax holiday in 2004, the people who had lobbied for that, the corporations, I should say, that lobbied for that, got a 22,000% return on their investment on average. Stunningly high how cheap you could buy our politicians and how well it delivers for you. And of course, this is set up as a public charity, Alec is. It's uh, under the 501c3 tax code. It dates back to 1973. Paul Weirich is one of the uh, leader, leaders who set this up. 
And uh, one of the things that they do, of course, is trying to make sure that less people vote. One of the things that got them in trouble was these voter ID laws trying to take away voting rights from African Americans, Latinos, some senior citizens across the country. And the guy who founded the group, Paul Weirich, explained back in the day uh, why they did that. Here, let's watch. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo goo syndrome. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. So as the voting populace goes down, the leverage of Republicans and multinational corporations goes up because they are directly opposed to democracy. If the population got what they wanted, well then who would you rob to give money to these corporate funders? And by the way, how much are they giving? Uh, the legislators have to give some nominal uh, dues, 50 bucks a year. Uh, but corporations who are part of this, and there's over 200 of them, pay annual dues anywhere between $7,000 to $25,000. Uh, that's at a bare minimum. Ava, uh, Alec had a, a budget of $7 million in 2010. Uh, companies like AT&T, Pfizer, Reynolds American have each contributed 130 to $398,000. And now look at this founder right there of, uh, of Alec. He's saying good government, he doesn't, he's not in favor, but he, he mocks it. He calls it goo goo. <laughs> you don't want good government, you want bad government. You want government that's corrupt. You want government that'll play ball, that you pay them and you get results. And that's exactly what they've gotten with Alec. Next uh, quote from, uh, directly from the New York Times. The returns show that corporate members pay dividends it calls them, I love that term, scholarships for lawmakers to travel to annual conferences, including a four-day retreat where Alex spends as much as $250,000 on child care for members' families. Now, imagine how much they're spending overall. If they're spending just, just for child care, $250,000. So you might have been wondering throughout, what do the legislators get? First of all, they get great jobs with all these companies the minute they get out of office. Second of all, they get campaign contributions. Third of all, they get this. They get all paid expense, vacations and trips. They get to live like the 1%. As long as they're screwing over the 99%, they're gonna get all the benefits. This is organized and obvious corruption. But uh, one of the other uh, pieces of legislation they talk about in the article is to make sure that the American public does not find out the chemicals used in fracking. Now, it's going into our ground and oftentimes our water, and oftentimes it's causing earthquakes. A new report came out about that just a couple of weeks ago, right? And, but we're not allowed to find out what's in it. Why? Who wrote that bill? ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil lobbyists wrote it, handed it to Alec, legislators, and different states uh, across the country uh, handed it in, said, you know, shh, you're not allowed to find out uh, what ExxonMobil is doing in putting that uh, into the groundwater. By the way, of course, ExxonMobil, one of the largest frackers in, in the country. Uh, New York Times continues to explain, draft bills that are preferred by a majority of lawmakers are sometimes killed by the corporate members at the table. Now, I love that because that's a great explanation of who's in charge here. It's not that the legislators are getting some interesting suggestions and they're like, all right, now we'll take it from here. No, no, no. The corporations say, hey, listen, dog, you do as we tell you, okay? In fact, in one case that they have here on the issue of online piracy, legislators uh, that were on the board voted 17 to 1 to pursue one type of legislation. The corporations were mixed on it. It was just 8 to 8. It was a tie vote. They killed it. But wait a minute. I thought the legislators were in charge. They voted 17 to 1 to pursue it. No, 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 their masters were unsure which way to go. They say, we don't give a damn if you voted 17 to 1. What do you think, you're in charge? Here, go, go on vacation, okay? Go, be a good dog and do as we tell you, and then you get a pat on the head, okay? This is, what do we, why do we even let the legislators vote? What a joke this is. Now, more rules in favor of corporations. Lawmakers can be removed from a task force leadership position for any reason while private sector members can be removed only with cause, like non-payment of dues. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. 
So if you don't pay your dues, that's the one reason you could be removed as a corporation. But look, the whole point is to help corporations. But if you don't play ball, you could, if you're a politician, you can be kicked out at any moment for any reason if you displease the masters, okay? Uh, and uh, in all 50 states, by the way, they have detailed color-coded uh, spreadsheets on what they call good bills and problematic bills. So they go to help make sure the good bills get passed, good as in help corporations hurt the public, and uh, problematic bills that might actually help the citizens. Well, no, 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 they have to be, of course, destroyed. Um, Alan P. Dye is a lawyer for Alec, and he says, no, 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 if you look at, uh, at the Alec method of operating, it's all based on nonpartisan research and analysis. <laughs> nonpartisan, that's awesome. Now, you want to know what the reality is? Of the 104 leadership positions they have for legislators in Alec, 103 of them are filled by Republicans. <laughs> Joe, no, they're nonpartisan. What are you talking about? And by the way, almost every piece of legislation that they have submitted, uh, and I say almost just because it is every piece of legislation, but out of the thousands that have been submitted, perhaps you can find one that somehow could be considered non conservative. But all the ones the New York Times looked at were right leaning. And that's being very kind by saying right leaning. But it isn't about right or left, it isn't about conservative or uh, liberal, and I want you to understand that because this is important. It's about making sure that, pro that corporations make more of a profit. They don't really give a damn. They, corporations aren't people. They don't have an ideology. Their ideology is make as much money as possible. And if I got to buy corrupt politicians to do it, I'll do it. And if it's in favor of conservatives, great. And most of the time, since conservatives, unfortunately, it didn't used to be this way. But the Republican Party has become a subsidiary of multinational corporations. So hence, that's why, and that has become the quote-unquote conservative position, which is not really conservative. Conservatives are supposed to be in favor of capitalism, not crony capitalism. But unfortunately, they've forgotten that. So the Republican Party has become crony capitalist 101, and the leader of that group is Alec. And should they lose their uh, nonprofit status with the IRS? Absolutely.